Hey everyone, you know most people have neighbors, whether they're living on top of you through paper-thin walls or even a mile down the road. There's always someone to ask for a cup of sugar, but that's most people. Then there are those who don't have anybody nearby. Maybe they're living alone on a remote island or in a home that can only be reached by a boat. So join me for today's video as we count down the 15 most isolated buildings and structures on Earth. Number 15, the home on Illiday Island. Anybody looking to get away from the hustle and bustle of a big city need look no further than Iceland's Elliday Island. At first glance, it may seem like there's nowhere to set up shop. Well, relax and put your feet up. Because upon further examination, there's one singular home. It's located in the Atlantic Ocean in an archipelago, and this area of tiny piece of land is less than a quarter of a square mile. It's clear that there's really nothing going on here, but seeing as how there's no facilities and resources on the island, who would ever want to live here? A fun little rumor made the rounds for a time that the Icelandic government gifted the island to none other than Bjork, who allegedly wanted to build a little home away from home here. Well, sadly for the rest of us, that rumor was quickly debunked after both parties denied those claims. But that still begs the question of who put that home there and why? Some people say it belongs to an anonymous, eccentric billionaire. Others say it's home to a fanatic cult. And some people believe that it's not there at all. And the photos have all been photoshopped somehow. No one but the island itself knows for sure. Number 14. Svalbard Global Seed Vault While those behind the Svalbard Global Seed Vault may not tell you that they're prepping for the end of the world, this isolated structure would become one of the most important places on the face of the planet in case of an Armageddon. Located on the Norwegian island of Spitsbergen in the remote Arctic Svalbard archipelago, this vault is a secure backup facility for the world's crop diversity. In the event of a global catastrophe, be it man-made or natural, the vault provides long-term storage of duplicate seeds conserved in gene banks around the world. As of 2021, this seed vault is said to house over a million distinct crop samples, which represents more than 13,000 years of agricultural history, and it costs about $282,000 a year to maintain it, which, when you think about it, is a fair price to pay for the conservation of seeds and crops. But the vault is much more than just a room full of seeds. A lot of work and care goes into keeping the specimens safe and ready. They're stored in a sealed three-ply foil pack and then placed into the plastic tote containers on metal shelving racks. The storage rooms are kept just below freezing and at these low temperatures and limited access to oxygen, it will ensure low metabolic activity and delay the seeds aging. The permafrost surrounding the facility also helps to maintain that low temperature of the seeds if the electricity supply fails. Number 13, Bishop Rock Lighthouse. Living in a lighthouse always means a little bit of isolation. It's a tough truth that comes with the territory, but there's one location in particular that's truly off-grid, holding the Guinness World Record for the world's smallest island with a structure on it, Bishop Rock. This means that the lighthouse on Bishop Rock stands on just 0. .0007 square miles of land. Yeah, that's tiny. This lighthouse sits in the westernmost part of the Isles of Scilly, and the archipelago is about 28 miles to the southwestern tip of the Cornish Peninsula of Great Britain. But the structure here is actually the second of its kind to live on that island. Construction on the original iron lighthouse began in 1847, but it was washed away before it could be completed, seeing as how it's so damn close to the water. The building we see today was completed in 1858, and it was first lit in that same year. So how does one even get there? Well, in more modern times, a helipad was built on the roof. But before that, visitors would rappel from the top with winches installed at the lamp level and at the base below to boats waiting away from the lighthouse. Just imagine trying to do that during a storm. No thanks. Number 12, the Church on Ketchke Pillar. As the name would imply, this isolated structure sits at the tippy top of a 130-foot tall pillar. The structure is a church, which was home to monks during medieval times who just wanted a place where they could get away from it all. But in the end, Kachki Pillar was so isolated and cut off from the rest of the world below that if you lived there, you also died there. There was simply nowhere else to go, and getting up and down proved to be too arduous of a task. Making it to the top alone was a sign of your piety and convictions and endurance, so why spoil that by coming back down? Once the last monk there died, the Kachki Pillar remained abandoned until 1995, when one local monk returned to the holy site to restore it to its former glory, and of course, he took up residency. 
The only way for this monk to reach the top was by climbing a centuries-old iron ladder, which is so dangerous that the local government is warned against its use, because if you fall, well, that's the end of your story. Number 11. The Drina River House The Drina River House It's a tiny little home made of wood hiding away in rural Serbia. And with a name like River House, you'd think that this home is on prime waterfront property. Well, yes and no because the Drina River House sits on a tiny rock literally in the middle of the river. This dangerous home was built in 1968, and because of the poorly planned location, it's been destroyed seven times from flooding. I mean, you can't blame the homeowners for wanting a little peace and quiet, but this home may be a little more trouble than it's worth, as its safety depends entirely on the ebbs and flows of the river. And if there's a bad storm, then forget about it. And ironically, the Drina River House was built by a group of local swimmers who wanted some shelter when the conditions of the river got a little too rough. But in the end, they built a structure that's just as susceptible to Mother Nature as they are. Nowadays, the Drina River House serves better as a fun local monument than it does a livable home. And if you do live there, then you better know how to swim, because how else do you get to the grocery store? Number 10. Paro Taksong Monks certainly lead an interesting life, with many of them living as far from the rest of society as possible. One such place is Parotaksong in Tibet. It's a Vajrayana Himalayan Buddhist site located on the cliffside of Upper Paro Valley in Bhutan and is known as one of the 13 tiger's nest caves in historical Tibet. Parotaksong has quite literally a mythical history, with monks believing that it has a number of sites where gods and demons came down from the heavens long ago. But the monastery was built in its current iteration in 1692 and underwent renovations in both 1958 and 2005. You can find it by going just over six miles to the north of Paro as it hangs on a precarious cliff. Calling the rock slopes here steep is an understatement, but the near vertical drop allows for the monastery to be built right into the rock face. Though it looks intense and foreboding, the monastery complex has access from several different locations, like the northwest path through the forest, from the south along the path used by pilgrims and devotees, and from the north overlooking the rocky plateau called the Hundred Thousand Fairies. A mule track leading to it passes through a pine forest that's adorned with colorful prayer flags and thick yet vibrant green moss. But on most days, clouds shroud the monastery and give it an extra eerie feeling of isolation and mysticism. Number 9. The Church of St. Johann Constructed in 1774, the Church of St. Johann in Ranui, Italy is quite literally in the middle of nowhere. This small church sits in the heart of the beautiful Dolomite mountain landscape, and despite being completely dwarfed by the surrounding trees and mountain range, is easily one of the most photographed sites of South Tyrol. But despite this remote location, the church is gorgeously decorated, as if it's a prize to behold by those willing to make the trek out here. The facade of the entrance is intricately adorned with a fresco depicting the church's patron saint, John Nepomuk, whose story is a pretty sad one. Painted in the mid-18th century, the church has nine Baroque paintings that narrate John's tale, which ends with him being thrown into and drowning in the river Vlatava. He was canonized in 1729, becoming the patron saint of Bohemia of the Confessors and of all the people in danger of drowning. He's also the patron saint against defamation and for the good reputation of individuals. It's not a bad thing to be known for. But the real centerpiece here is the largest painting, which shows St. John presenting his tongue to the baby Jesus, sitting in his mother's lap as a sign of silence and was the cause of his martyrdom. If you're willing to sit on a long bus ride, this church is worth the trip. Number 8. McMurdo Station McMurdo Station is a research station owned by the United States smack dab in the middle of Antarctica. But despite this isolation, McMurdo Station is the largest human settlement on that continent, with an average population of about 1,200 people, many of whom are scientists. Living here ain't easy, seeing as how the average temperature year-round is below freezing, and getting here is a pain in the ass in its own right. While there is a point at the southern tip of the settlement, the preferred way of getting in or out is via plane, but the freezing temperatures and icy landscape makes takeoff and landings incredibly difficult. Instead of a typical tarmac, the runway here is built on the bare volcanic rot of the Hoot Point Peninsula on Ross Island. It's completely made out of ice. That's not to say that there's a cold lake beneath the surface. No, this ice is actually made from four inches of tightly compacted snow. It's a unique way to make the perfect use of natural surroundings. But things get even more difficult during the Arctic winters when the area is dark for a full 24 hours a day. 
The runway doesn't offer the pilots any lights either, so during the dark days and the serious whiteouts, pilots are going to have to land blind. But don't worry about it too much. In order to fly here, pilots must all undergo rigorous special training. Number 7. Mount Hua's Chess Pavilion Mount Hua is located near the city of Huayin in China's Shaanxi province. One of the great five mountains of China, it's got a long history of religious significance. But people come from far and wide to brave the hike and reach the Chess Pavilion on the mountain's east peak. The route up the mountain has been called one of the most dangerous hikes in the world, and the trail's about 6,900 feet long. While the area was known for being popular amongst pilgrims and hermits, tourists began flocking to the area in droves in the 1990s. The many exposed, narrow pathways with deadly drops gave the mountain a deserved reputation for danger, although safety measures like cutting deeper pathways, building up stone steps and wider paths, and adding railings have to some extent mitigated that danger. But that doesn't mean the risk is gone completely. The local government has opened new tracks and created one-way routes to some of the more dangerous parts, so barring crowds and icy conditions, the mountain can be scaled without extreme risk now. Some of the most precipitous tracks have been closed off, though. The former trail leading along a cliff face from the North Peak to the South Peak was also known as being extremely dangerous. There's now a new and safer stone-built path to the South Peak Temple and onto the peak itself. The hike is so long that many people will begin their ascent at night to reach the East Peak by dawn. Number 6. The Crystal Mill when we think of modern-day power plants, we tend to think of densely populated smoggy cities. But there was a time when that wasn't the case. A calm, clean exception is Crystal Mill, located on the Crystal River, Colorado. This tiny, isolated, wooden power plant is in a gorgeous natural setting surrounded by high mountains and dense forests. Founded in the 19th century, the small industrial town of Crystal, whose inhabitants were engaged in the development of mines, is situated nearby. Today, the old wooden house set on a stone ledge is privately owned, so it's impossible to visit. But visitors can still get close enough to snap a few pics. In spring, the river where the Crystal Mill sits attracts hundreds of kayakers because the Crystal River reaches its highest point. And after that happens, a stellar waterfall forms right next to the power plant. This power station operated until 1917 when all mines were exhausted, and locals left these places to find work elsewhere. Today, the mill is the only remaining structure to remind folks that this old town was once a bustling home of industry. Number 5. Sphinx Observatory The Swiss Alps are a hot tourist destination in their own right. They do not need an introduction. But the Alps are also home to one of the most isolated structures in the world, the Sphinx Observatory. The Sphinx Observatory is an astronomical observatory located high in the air, about 11,000 feet above sea level, making it the second highest observatory in the world. This mountain top has been tunneled through to fit the elevator that ascends to the observatory from the railway station, and this is the highest such train station in Europe. With multiple laboratories, a weather observation station, astronomical and meteorological domes, and a 76-centimeter telescope, this observatory has served as headquarters for researchers in fields like glaciology, medicine, cosmic ray physics, and astronomy. And over the years, the building has adapted to meet scientists' needs. Today, the observatory is fully outfitted with electricity, water, telephone, internet, and even a machine to produce liquid oxygen. So while it's incredibly isolated, it's not cut off from the rest of the world. But we can't let scientists have all the fun. So in addition to the science and knowledge seeking, the Sphinx also provides visitors with vertigo and nausea-inducing views of the snowy Alps. From the metal grating terrace that surrounds the building, one can see over 11,000 feet below, with views stretching as far as Germany and Italy. Number 4. The Iso Hotel This next isolated structure on our list may look a bit familiar to all the diehard James Bond fans out there, as it was featured in 2008's Quantum of Solace. And for good reason, because this hotel in Chile makes for the perfect evil lair, and it's in the middle of nowhere. This structure mainly serves as the accommodation for the Paranal Observatory scientists and engineers who work there on a roster system. Having opened its sandy doors in 2002, it's been called a boarding house on Mars because of the vast desert landscape that surrounds it. But despite the name, this isn't a commercial hotel and the public can't book rooms here. Created by Chilean-born architect Hernan Marchant, this Martian structure is held in high regard as it won the LEAF Award in 2004 and the Cityscape Architectural Review Awards in 2005. But the ESO Hotel is the dream destination for scientists and researchers. 
But the ESO Hotel is the dream destination for scientists and researchers because it's home to the VLT, or Very Large Telescope, which is one of the most powerful telescopes on Earth. The hotel is located at 7,900 feet above sea level on Cerro Paranal, and staying here is incredibly tough thanks to the extreme climatic conditions like intense sunlight, dryness, high wind speeds, and huge fluctuations in temperature. To protect against these, an artificial oasis was built to allow some respite between shifts. Number 3. Hanging Temple The higher the home, the closer you are to God, right? Well, maybe that's what the monks at the Hanging Monastery in China were thinking when they built this structure sometime between the 4th and 5th centuries. The Hanging Monastery has been turning heads and craning necks for more than 1,400 years, and hopefully won't be going anywhere anytime soon, because it's got such a rich history. It's the only temple in China dedicated to Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism, and encompasses over 40 halls and is home to more than 80 Buddhist sculptures, all made of bronze, iron, stone, and mud. This place is old, but it's also tough not to notice its location as it sits 246 feet up in the rock, with most of the structure held up on stilts. It's not the type of place where you want to look down from, and if heights really aren't your thing, then perhaps this hanging monastery isn't the right place to come and find some inner peace. And just thinking about how high the monks had to climb and how they built much of this by hand all those years ago without falling to their doom is enough to make your head spin. And while the location of the Hanging Monastery seems utterly crazy, the cliffs keep it safe from high winds and storms. Number 2. Debredamo It should be pretty clear by now that monks like to be left alone, which is why they built the Debredamo in Ethiopia. Debredamo is both the name of a monastery and the flat-topped mountain that it sits on top of. The 6th century monastery sits on 3,300 by 1,300 feet of space, 7,200 feet above sea level, and overlooks an incredibly steep drop. But how exactly did it get up to such a high location? Well, for starters, you walk, but the final stretch requires using a very rudimentary rope pulley system to make it the final 49-foot climb. Now, the next question is, how does one get a structure in such a precarious location? Well, the story goes that Abuna Argawi, one of the most revered of the Nine Saints, established the Debredamo Monastery on top of the cliff with a little help from the heavens. It says that God himself made a giant snake lower its tail down the mountain, allowing Argawi to clamber up to the summit. Well, whether the story is fact or fiction doesn't really matter, because the fact that anyone could get parts and labor up that 50-foot cliff is astounding, no matter which way you cut it. Number 1. Meteora for whatever reason, monks like to take things a little higher, and while the more modern world will just build a skyscraper and just live up in a penthouse, monks will instead build their modest homes high up in the mountains. Sure, the views might be spectacular, but the air is thin and the falls are long, but I guess that's the life of an old-timey monk. The Meteora Monasteries is perched right at the top and on the edge of a sandstone peak in Greece. Only 60 monks and nuns live in the monastery, and for centuries it's been a fortress of solitude, offering them not just peace and quiet, but protection from any unwanted trespassers and aggressors, because if you want to get up here, you better get ready for a climb. Chances are, not even God himself is going to help you get up there, but despite this precarious location, the Meteora Monasteries is one of the most visited places in the country, especially because of the sweeping views of the flat fields that surround the area. The Meteora Monasteries have become so popular, in fact, that it's been used as a location for big productions like Game of Thrones. And while it's likely that people who built it in the 14th century didn't plan on their monastery becoming so popular, I'm sure they wouldn't mind. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular Top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.